Hello there everybody, Martin here from Affinity 4 Commander. Today we have a game with a rather unique conclusion, so without further ado, let's take a look at those opening hands. I am playing my Unesh Cryo Sphinx Sovereign Sphinx Tribal deck, keeping an opening hand of Soul Ring, Swiftfoot Boots, Argent Sphinx, Conundrum Sphinx, Terrain Generator and two islands. I am playing my Urza Lord Protector Artifact Control deck, and keep a starting hand of Negate, Thirst for Knowledge, Thoughtcast, Ancient Den, Hallowed Fountain, and Two Islands. Atlantis is playing her Atraxa Praetor's Voice Poison Counters deck, and keeps an opening hand consisting of Cyclonic Rift, Reality Shift, Inexorable Tide, Oath of the Fairy, Vraska Betrayal Sting, Flooded Strand, and Seaside Citadel. And finally, Joe is playing his Prosh Sky Raider of Curse Sacrifice deck, keeping a starting hand made up of Elves of Deep Shadow, Blood Artist, Augur of Autumn, Canyon Slough, Geothermal Bog, Wooded Ridgeline, and Yavimaya Cradle of Growth. Atlantis wins the die roll and starts the game off by playing Flooded Strand. With nothing more to do, she passes to Alex. I play Hallowed Fountain, choosing to have the land enter tapped and pass the turn. I play an island, cast Soul Ring, and then cast Swift Foot Boots. Rather chuffed, I end my turn. In his turn, Joe plays Yavimaya, Cradle of Growth, and casts Elves of Deep Shadow. With nothing more to do, he passes to Atlantis, who responds by paying one life and sacrificing her fetch land. She searches her library for Temple Garden, having it enter the battlefield tapped, and proceeds to her turn. Atlantis plays Seaside Citadel and passes. I play Ancient Den and end my turn. In my turn, I play an island and tap out to cast Conundrum Sphinx. Lacking the mana to equip my boots to them, I pass to Joe. Joe starts his turn by playing Geothermal Bog and takes one damage from his elves in order to cast Blood Artist. Out of mana, he passes the turn. Atlantis plays Plaza of Heroes and ends her turn. I play an island and cast Azorius Signet. With two mana open, I pass to Martin. I begin my turn by moving straight to combat, attacking Atlantis with my Sphinx. Each player names a card that they believe to be on top of their library, which we all then reveal to be incorrect. Everybody puts the revealed cards on the bottom of their libraries, Atlantis takes 4 damage, and I move to my post-combat main phase. Here I play Terrain Generator, equip my Shoesies to Conundrum Sphinx, and pass. Joe takes one damage from his Elves of Deep Shadow and casts Augur of Autumn. Next he plays Daragaz's Caldera from the top of his library with his Augur's ability, returning Yevamaya to his hand with a land's ETB. With no one drops in his hand or on the top of his library, Joe ends his turn. Atlantis draws, the score's down to 7 and passes to Alex. Oh dear. In my turn I play an island and cast my commander. Urza, Lord Protector. Once again, keeping two mana open, I pass the turn, to which Martin responds by activating his Terrain Generator. He puts an island from his hand into play tapped, showing that you don't need green to ramp, and moves to his turn. I start my turn by casting my commander, Unesh, Cryo Sphinx Sovereign, revealing the top four cards of my library with the goat-headed Lion Bird's ability. I ask Atlantis to sort them into two piles, and she offers to split the cards of all four in one pile and zero in the other if I refrain from attacking her for a few turns. It's a bit early in the game to be making deals like that, don't you think? I accept Atlantis' terms, putting four new cards into my hand and play an island. I then use this mana to move my boots over to Unesh and move to combat. Here I attack Joe with Conundrum Sphinx and Alex with Unesh, triggering the former creature's ability. Everybody names a card, then reveals the top card of their library. Nobody guesses correctly, even Joe who knew what the top card of his deck was, and all revealed cards are placed on the bottom of their owner's libraries. Guess Joe would rather scry away excess lands than draw them right now. Damage then occurs with both Joe and Alex taking 4, and I end my turn. Joe plays Strip Mine as his land for turn, and casts the Squee the Immortal that was on top of his library. Such a beautiful looking card. With some nice synergies on board, Joe passes to Atlantis. Atlantis draws and, still lacking a fourth land, discards and passes. Alex responds to this by casting Thirst for Knowledge, drawing three cards and discarding Aetherflux Reservoir. 
with no further interruptions, he proceeds to his turn. I begin my turn by casting Land Tax, closely followed by Mind Stone. Not yet finished, I pay a single blue mana to cast Thought Cast. Drawing two cards, and play Glacial Fortress as my land for turn. Did you just draw into that? Maybe. Once again, keeping mana open for reasons, I end my turn. In my turn, I play an island and cast Sphinx of the Second Sun. Oh, sweet Urza now. Unesha's ability triggers and Alex splits the top four cards of my library into two piles. Without hesitation, I put the pile containing a lone Consecrated Sphinx into my hand, putting the other three cards into my graveyard and move to combat. Here I attack Joe and Alex in the same manner as I did last turn, and each player once again names the card they think could be on top of their libraries. We all guess wrong for the third time in a row, with Joe using this trigger as a way of scrying away yet another land, and damage then occurs. Alex and Joe take 4 damage from their respective attackers, and I move to my second main phase. Atlantis responds to this by casting Reality Shift, exiling Sphinx of the Second Sun. Deeply saddened by this, I manifest the top card of my library and move to my second main phase without getting an additional beginning phase. You poor dear. Here I cast Curator of Mysteries and choose Joe to help resolve my commander's ability. I pick the pile containing three lands, the score down to seven, and scry one of my Curator's ability. I keep the top card of my library where it is and pass to Joe. Joe replays Yavamaya, Cradle of Growth, and casts Elvish Mystic. Next, he casts Fauna Shaman, and with a board full of weenies, passes the turn. Atlantis draws, breathes a sigh of relief, and casts Cultivate. She got there in the end, friends. Alex responds to the lack of open blue mana his opponents have by casting Dig Through Time, putting two of the top seven cards of his library into his hand. Atlantis then searches her library for an island in a swamp, putting the black source into play tapped, and playing the blue source as her line for turn. Back on track, Atlantis ends her turn. Land tax triggers in my upkeep, and I search my library for three basic planes. I put these into my hand, play the shiny one, and cast Urza's Bauble. Next, I cast Grand Arbiter Augustine IV, closely followed by Emery, Lurker of the Lock. I mill four cards, including Thassa's Oracle, and cast Thought Vessel before passing to Martin. I start my turn by playing an island and cast Consecrated Sphinx. I let Atlantis choose how to arrange the piles from Unesha's trigger and take the pile of three containing Rapid Hybridization. I then cast the Hybridization, targeting Fauna Shaman, destroying the elf and replacing her with a 3-3 Frog Lizard. Blood Artist triggers with Joe choosing to drain me for one and I then cycle Lonely Sandbar. I scry one with Cultivator of Mysteries, moving the top card of my library to the bottom, then draw a card. Moving to combat, I attack Alex with Unesh, Atlantis with my Manifest, and Joe with two 4 4 Sphinxes. Each player names the top card of their libraries, with Joe being the only one to guess correctly with Genesis Hydra. Big surprise there. He puts the many headed monstrosity into his hand, while the rest of us put our revealed cards on the bottom of our libraries. Damage then occurs with Alex taking 4, Atlantis taking 2, and Joe taking 8. Happy with the amount of damage I've dished out so far this game, I pass the turn. Joe responds to this by cycling Canyon Slough, taking 1 damage from Elves of Deep Shadow as he does so. He draws a card, and I draw 2 thanks to Consecrated Sphinx. Get ready to hear that phrase a lot. With that out of the way, I move to my cleanup step, discard down to 7, and pass. Joe draws, Martin draws 2, and Joe plays Kerkeep as his land for turn. Next, he casts his commander, Prosh, Sky Raider of Kerr and creates 601 Cobalt of Kirkkeep tokens with the Dragon's Cast trigger. With yet another card that combos with Furchin on the battlefield, Joe ends his turn. Atlantis draws a card, I draw two cards, and Atlantis plays a Swamp. She then casts Oath of the Fairy, exiling one of her lands of the enchantment's ability, and moves to her end step. The exiled land re-enters the battlefield, and Atlantis passes to Alex, who responds by sacrificing Urza's Bauble. He takes a peek at a random card in Joe's hand, and moves to his turn. In my upkeep land tax triggers, and I search my library for two planes and an island. I put these into my hand, then draw the turn, and Martin draws two as well. Next, I draw from my bauble, and Martin draws two more cards. So many cards! In my main phase, I play Temple of the False God, which I use to help cast Tishar, Ancestor's Apostle. 
Next, I pay two life in order to cast Phyrexian Metamorph, triggering Tishar's ability. I return the Thassa's Oracle in my graveyard to the battlefield, and look the top five cards in my library with the Merfolk's ability. Wait, wait, wait. That card's ability doesn't just say win the game. Apparently not. I put one of the five cards on the top of my library and the rest onto the bottom, and Phyrexian Metamorph finally resolves. I have the Shapeshifter enter as a copy of Consecrated Sphinx. Discard down to seven, and pass the turn. I begin my turn by drawing a card, to which Alex responds by drawing two cards of his Consecrated Sphinx. However, I respond to Alex drawing two cards by drawing four cards myself, to which Alex responds by drawing eight cards. Both of us repeat this interaction until Alex has drawn roughly half his library, and I have my entire deck in my hand. You really going all out on this one? Next I play Temple of the False God, and cast Jace, Wielder of Mysteries. Not wanting me to win the game here and now with Jace's plus one ability, Alex attempts to counter the Planeswalker with Negate. I respond by casting Swan Song, countering the counter spell, and Alex creates a 2-2 bird token as compensation. You too kind. With Jace still on the stack, Alex flashes in Snapcaster Mage, giving the Negate that I just dealt with flashback. He recasts the counter spell, which I allow to resolve, and my win condition is put into the graveyard before he even enters the battlefield. Not giving up just yet though, I use my remaining mana to cast Laboratory Maniac, which Alex is unable to counter given that he has no blue mana. A mana tithe exists, you know. Do you run it? No. Well then. Moving to combat, I attack Atlantis with all of my Sphinxes apart from Consecrated Sphinx, and Conundrum Sphinx's ability then triggers. Joe, Atlantis, Alex and I each name a card, and reveal the top cards of our libraries. Nobody guesses correctly with each of us moving the top cards of our libraries to the bottom, and damage occurs with Atlantis taking 12. With my victory all but assured, I move to my end step, to which Alex responds by casting Dispatch. I let out a cry of despair as Alex exiles my Maniac, discard down to 7, and end my turn. Joe draws, and Martin chooses not to draw two cards with Consecrated Sphinx. Can't imagine why. I, on the other hand, happily draw twice, and Joe casts the food chain that he'd been saving for just the right moment. Given that I and Martin are both out of coloured mana from our counter war, and Atlantis' spells cost one more thanks to Grand Arbiter Augustin IV, the game winning enchantment resolves, and Joe demonstrates how he can produce infinite mana and kobolds by sacrificing and recasting his commander. This then creates unlimited blood artist triggers, draining Martin, Atlantis, and I of all our life, leaving Joe as the victor. Well, that is it for another game. I hope that you enjoyed watching Alex and I battle it out only for Joe to sneak in and become the victor. I'd like to give a huge thank you to each and every one of our incredible patrons, without whom we'd be unable to continue making content such as this. Also, be sure to check out our affiliate links in the video description. It won't cost you anything extra to make your purchases through these, but it really helps out the channel. And finally, don't forget that you can help to support us in four quick and easy ways liking this video, subscribing, hitting that bell icon, and leaving us a comment, I read every one. That's it for now though, we'll see you next time. Stay awesome!